So, where are you headed? Hmm. Not the talkative type, eh? That's okay. Most people I pick up are just waiting. Waiting for their turn to talk. Want a raisin? They're from my farm. Thompson seedless. Good raisins. We steal far more of those in California than anywhere on Earth. You want to know the clearest evidence that reality isn't real? Raisins and grapes, man. They're the same thing, but they taste disgusting when eaten together. Obvious bug in the program there, right? Memory is a slippery thing. Think about when somebody asks you about this ride later. Assuming you even know where you're going and get someplace where somebody can ask you. Hey, how'd you get here anyway? They'll ask you. Oh, I itched. And your brain will flash back for a second when you say this. And it'll show you a frozen snapshot of yourself sitting in this car talking to me like we are right now. But which moment will it actually show you? Will it be this one? Or this one? Or this one? We think we remember how people really were. How our lives together really were. But when we think back to them, even the people we cared about the most, all we're doing is snatching moments out of the air. Just grabbing another raisin out of the box. My wife. She's dead now. But you probably guessed that. Oh, thanks. But you don't look like you're doing so well yourself. Takes one to know one, right? I can always spot someone who's grieving along this highway. They usually stand on the road with a dazed look on their face and their thumb up in the air. No, I don't know you. Just know the type. My wife? If I'm totally honest with you, I don't really remember what she looked like. Remember everything about her. Just not her face. Some people have faces that are easy to remember. <laughs> Doesn't seem fair. Well, it's not as easy as you think. I'll give you an example. You think you're present in the moment? You've been talking to me for a few minutes now. What color are my eyes? Yep, not bad. But that's just your photographer's eye. Just figured from your gear. A lot of photographers carry that backpack. Tell you what, Ansel Adams. Do me a favor and close the window, would you? That's better. Now, where were we? Yeah, fair number. But after a while, you start seeing the same few archetypes over and over. You got the Numb Nuts Kerouac fans. You got your autodidact blowhards. They'll talk your ears off. You got a lot of people from Cincinnati for some reason. You got your deadheads trying to get to some concert someplace. And then there's the water bottle person, always worrying that they're going to run out of water before they get where they're going. Still. <laughs> 
You're the first hitcher I ever picked up who doesn't have a destination. Copernicus. Well, seems like the right name for a guy who's traveling the world without knowing where he's going. You just sit back, Copernicus, and invent a language where false statements are impossible. What? Oh, I stand corrected. You know, when I was a kid, my brother and I used to drive our parents crazy on long drives like this. Our folks wouldn't let us listen to the radio in the car. So we used to make up these songs about food on long drives to pass the time. We had this one with about 30 verses, each about a different kind of grain. There was this one time when we passed a billboard for this new kind of bread. Balach bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of balah bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of balah bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of balah bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of balah bread. Oh, oh yeah, that drove mom and dad crazy. Come on, join in. In hell they have a hell a lot of balah bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of balah bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of balah bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of balah bread. Actually, I'm beginning to understand my parents' perspective. Getting older is funny. It's like reading a book where less and less happens, but the writing gets better and better. Thanks. I got it from an app. It's this app with philosophical sayings. My wife got it for me, to make me sound smarter. Oh, she had a way with words. Yeah, well, that all sort of depends on which raisin you take out of the box, right? How you spin it. We were married for 37 years. People used to ask us how we managed, being married and all, working off the side of the road together, sharing a little trailer. The truth is, nobody knows if they're happily married. All they know is that it's the thing they've been doing every day for the last 37 years. It's not that simple, Copernicus. Life has a way of chipping away at that certainty. It'd be easier if you had a number assigned to you, a number from one to a hundred, printed on both your foreheads where you could always see it. You would arrive in the mail every year, right after you file taxes. Oh, we're a 71. That couple down the street, the Rosens, they're an 82 this year. Oh, I guess they have it a bit better than us. Some way of knowing. Hmm. There's a photo in that glove box there, of us, standing in front of our trailer. It was in a magazine. One of those stories about vanishing farmers that always pulls heartstrings with the rest of the country. Well, I never opened the glove box myself. It's kind of a superstition of mine. But help yourself. Hey, where'd you get that? That's not her. And that guy there, he looks like you. I don't know. I was gonna ask you the same question, Copernicus. Did he... who gave this to you? Well, I guess it belongs to you. You'd better hold on to it. What woman? Well, oh, her. Well, hard to say. I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. 
What's that black thing in the glove box, anyway? See anything interesting there? A windmill, eh? No idea. <laughs> 